Check it, check it.
Yo, what is up, everyone? This is episode 32 of the Glimmercast, and today we'll be talking about arcade gaming. We'll be making it nice and friendly for beginners, and I've got a full panel of folks covering the entire spectrum of home console arcade gaming, as well as um, uh, cabinet gaming for um, full size to three-fourths to all the above as far as like sizing for uh, re-release arcades. So I'm going to go ahead and go around the panel and introduce everyone. We've got Los joining us from Big uh, Retro Show. How are you doing today, sir? Hello, Ryan. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Thanks for having me on. Of course. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And um, my awesome co-host, uh, Ken from Retro Complex. How are you doing tonight? How are you there? Fine. I'm good. I'm good today. Awesome. And a uh, friend of the channel uh, who joined us for our um, physical media collecting stream a month or two ago, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Jason OTG. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. It's the weekend, so enjoying myself. Doing good. Absolutely. Me too. I work that Monday through Friday, so the weekend yeah. is my, my saving <laughs> grace for sure. Uh, and last but not least, first time on the channel, um, along with Los, um, UAG, how are you doing? What's up? What's up? What's up, guys? Yes. Right, oh my man, gosh. fun. Yes, I am too. Um, yeah, this is um, a really, really big um, topic for me to try and dive into. It's my first time talking at length with experts in the arcade community as far as um, what solutions are out there and which ones are going to be most consumer friendly that y'all would recommend. Um, I definitely want to go into uh, software solutions first if um, I want to, if we, if that sounds good, uh, but first I want to get to know of, um, our, some of our guests as far as like their connection to the arcade community and some of their favorite titles. Uh, Los, if you want to go first. Oh, okay. Um, m yeah, my connection to the arcade community uh, started with Pac-Man <laughs> way back <laughs> in the day in the early 80s. And ever since then, I've been playing in the arcades, uh, big time arcade enthusiast. I love playing arcades more so than I love playing just like the regular console games. Uh, it's definitely something that I think is is at the very fiber of my existence as a gamer and something that I hold uh, near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was a gateway drug, obviously, to home console gaming and just gaming in general. And so, yeah, I mean, arcade gaming has been a big part of my life. It's something that I try to feature on the Big Retro Show quite a bit. I've been doing a lot more of arcade showcasing, just trying to go over some of the hits that came out uh, by the different companies, specifically like Konami and like, um, I haven't done a Capcom one yet, but I'm planning on doing that. But I've done Taito, I've done Konami, I've done like uh, the hottest arcade games to come out in 1989, like the hidden gems to come out in 1989. So I'm trying to do more arcade related content because that's really where my heart is. No, that's really awesome. I'm so glad that you could join us while you're um, in the midst of making this transition into new content for your channel. Um, yeah, uh, Ken, I know I, I talked with you about uh, planning this topic yeah. and um, you, you're probably a lot more knowledgeable on the arcade scene than I am, but a I, little wanna bit. Know, I wanna know like what little bit, you know, you bring to the table as far as like what you're super passionate about for the arcade well, scene. I, from the arcade scene, I used to play uh, Killer Instinct. That was one of my very first cabinets because I mostly went into the arcade for the pinballs machines. So that was my thing back then. But when it comes to Killing Instinct, I was always looking for that machine, wherever it was. Like, I, I even went to bars to play this freaking machine because it's yeah, only where you can find it in freaking Stop bars. Stop getting excited, OTG. It was amazing. I'm excited, dude. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> but yeah, I want to see this excitement for sure. Yeah, no, Ken, um, but you're speaking my language for sure because, like, no. all my biggest experience playing arcade games is always like, outside of the house like i never really had like a bunch of like console oh, ports gosh. of arcade games either but um yeah i definitely want to jump to um otg jason um what's up what, yeah 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 <laughs> I, i'm sure you probably tell this origin story on all of everyone's uh, podcasts but i want to hear it uh, from your from your side on my channel um actually the passion of arcades has been since i was a kid that's like some of the best times of my life but as far as my part of the community i started a second channel just for arcade uh, content otg side piece and in that we cover a lot of the uh, three quarter scale, whether it's arcade went up, I arcade at games. We do a lot of that stuff. And one of the people that really helped me out in that community is right here, the guy on my side, my brother from another mother, UAG. We run three shows in the arcade, um, home home arcade community. We run 
a, a show every weekday on his channel, Your Average uh, Gamer. Um, it, it, it's called WRP Weekly Retro Podcast, which, you know, I, I don't want to spoil it for him, but we do run three shows. We do run one after this show, which is going to be uh, we cater towards the community of casuals, but there are some good players in there. We do feature good players. So every week we, we uh, feature games like Neo Geo games, games that people don't really play. We, we like those oddball ones. And uh, I, it's just like we have a mixture. We care about the community. And, and that's what we're about, just enjoying these old school games and just showing people games that other people hadn't seen. It's just a passion that's been with me since a kid, since I was a kid. I'll let my brother from another brother, because I could keep talking. UAG, <laughs> introduce yourself or us, whatever you yes. want to do. Yes, take it away, UAG. <laughs> uh, well, I'm UAG, and it's because I'm your average gamer. I'm literally the average person that plays these things. And uh, my love for it's arcades lying. came with uh, my dad taking us every Saturday to one of our local arcades whether with nathan's or something like that um and you get taken back to a place when you play one of those machines it's very nostalgia driven for me um love you know all types of games i have every system known to man because i, I do love the gaming aspect of it um mortal kombat's my jam and um the show that he was talking about uh, the laundromat wars is just so the casual gamer could play not feel like uh you know, there's a lot of gatekeeping in these in these communities. Whether yes. you got like a a person selling you that you shouldn't have a, one of these machines in your home because they're pieces of crap. Well, fuck you. Um, and <laughs> with that being said, that's the reason why I came through. I was like, dude, the little man needs to have a voice in this, um, you know, community. So why not me? And then OTG came through, and, and we've been having a blast ever since. Yeah, it's like we just click, man. Like me and this dude's like my long lost brother, man. Like we we fight all the time, but secretly we agree, man. Like like whenever he said your average gamer, this dude is mean at pinball. When Ken was talking about pinball, pinball this guy, pinball. especially at V Pin, we 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 go for high scores. I I can't catch him. This dude's like way better for than now. Me. For now, yeah. <laughs> and when it comes to tennis games, any arcade, uh, virtual tennis, anything to do with tennis on the arcade, this dude he can't be beat. <laughs> so I, I would like I'll give UAG props and that's one of the few times you'll see me ever give him props because we fight all the time. That's what I was saying um, that I really love the dynamic and the chemistry y'all have on panels with each other. You really make not only like the subject matter accessible to people and y'all are really like consumer, you know, centric as far as like the information that you're surfacing, but you also just make the topic fun to learn about. Like for me, just coming in with like basically floor level knowledge of like where to even begin. Um, I was able to catch some of your podcasts and like, you know, be able to get a grasp as far as like, okay, here are some, you know, starting points. And that's definitely like the goal of uh, this podcast that um, I invited everyone on just to like get an idea of like, you know, what are some things that are important to y'all as consumers? And what were, what are some, you know, key things that you are looking for as far as like the solutions that are available for home, for home arcade um, gaming? But yeah, um, getting into the first um, part of the show, we're gonna go. We're gonna get into some of the games that are available for uh, for console release. I know there are a few collections that have been uh, announced recently, like from Capcom, Taito, um, uh, New Turtles Arcade uh, Collection, along with like some console, you know, um, uh, re-releases as well. Um, I definitely want to go around the panel and uh, get y'all's thoughts on like any newer collections that have been released or uh, announced and or released that, you know, have, that have um, um, got you interested in, you know, like possibly picking them up. And if there's any like, you know, concerns or about the port quality or anything like that, that you might want to shout out um, while I'm pulling some up, uh, whoever wants to go first, feel free to jump into this, into which, um, which ones are, are on your radar right now. I have a quick comment of what UAG said regarding the gatekeeping in the arcade community. And I think that gatekeeping happens also just like in the retro gaming community. Okay. There's really no wrong way to enjoy these arcade games. Um, I mean, it's a win-win situation. If you're playing it on an arcade one-up or on a, you know, emulator, or if you're playing it like on a Switch or something, there's really no wrong way to enjoy these things. That's just my two cents. No, that Great. that's 100% accurate. I I agree with that um, wholeheartedly. I wish a lot of people in this um, realm felt the same way. 
But some people want to piss in your Cheerios and tell you that you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. That there's only one way to do something. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Um, a lot of people in that retro community. And that, that's, like that. that's all I have. Yeah. I think yeah, that's we definitely the retro community, man. It's it's like the retro community. There, are, it is yeah. a bunch of elite elitists in the retro community, and I just I don't understand it. Games are supposed to be fun, enjoyable experiences for everyone. So, yep. on that note, um, I definitely want to shout out this collection here, which is one of my um, mm. my personal picks as far as like um, arcade collections that I'm personally looking forward to. Oh. Um, I'm not 100% sure as far as like, oh, are these going to be like, you know, the arcade ROMs or the, are these like console ROMs? Maybe okay. uh, uh, folks on the panel are more knowledgeable than I am about that info. This is um, definitely going to be arcade ROMs. Um, yeah. You know, they, they, they've made sure that to, to present it as such. A lot of these games are on the uh, big blue. So the arcade went up. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of double dipping in a sense, but. I, I'm for, sh for sure I'm gonna get this collection yeah. because you know you you broaden your uh, the amount of accessibility because this is cross platform. You know you're gonna have a bigger pool to to pull with um, to, to get some people in this because yeah. you can get in the door at forty bucks. You don't have to spend seven hundred bucks for mm -hmm. for a unit. Yeah, I'm looking at the marquee of titles that are all gonna be on here, and I'm just like the value just keeps you know scrolling. You know it just never ends. Um, but yeah, sorry, OTG, were you about oh, to yeah. say something? I, I was going to say what's cool about this is Capcom had released previously a beat em up collection with like Final Fight, Knights of the Round, other like favorites. So the fact that they're putting out this fighting collection that's going to have Dark Stalkers, I believe. Um, is that Puzzle Fighter or or which one is that, UAG? I'm not too sure. I think sure, that was Gem, Gem Fighter. Is it Gem with the little chibi characters? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're uh, going to be Red Air. That, that was never released, I think, in the United States. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's just, I, I think it's really cool because we got the 30th anniversary, which was a collection of Street Fighter games. So Capcom is releasing other games other than, I think, is there a uh, UAG, uh, is there like two Street Fighter games in here? Wait, there's a... I think there's three. I think it's the three main ones from the um, thing. But right. what what's really cool, and I, I'm sorry, I don't, you know, I'll let everybody else speak on this as well. Mm -hmm. But what I think happened is that Capcom saw the interest with having Big Blue. And, and and having the uh, 30th anniversary and how well they sold and they're just going to open up the catalog even more and more like you see these titles that you know haven't had life in a while like dark starkers and stuff like that it's, it's an exciting time uh Los, are there any titles on this collection that you're personally looking forward to or have any worries about as far as port quality no i think that they have done a good job so far with their arcade ports i like all of the street fighter stuff i like the dark stalkers like UAG said that title has not received enough love uh, in the retro scene. And I think that's a very good title. Some of these I've never even played before, like Red Earth. I've never played that one. Uh, the Vampire Hunter 2, never played that one. So I'm kind of excited to see how those play. I think this collection is a lot of bang for your buck. And if you guys don't know, if you pre-order this collection, you also get a free game called Three Wonders uh, for their uh, arcade arcade second stadium collection that they're they're coming out with uh, as well so that's just another incentive for you to order this collection got it uh -huh. no, yeah um so this is like kind of the key one i was um interested in and then i also have the um uh let's see obviously the cowabunga collection this has been one that um has been you know talked about all over um all over youtube all over twitter um this, these these games are definitely ones that I'm a little less familiar with. I didn't grow up playing them as much. So um, as far as like the like the port quality or anything like that, like do you feel like the this collection is actually like like very consumer friendly as far as the value, or do you feel like these ports exist, you know, in other you know formats like that that offer a better value than what's here? Oh, there's a lot of value in this collection right here, Thank you. Uh, okay. especially with the Turtles arcade games. Uh, they used to be on the Xbox 360 and the PS3 and due to licensing, they got taken off. So people have been wanting to play these games, especially people who play on console, don't, don't you know, have Raspberry Pis or other ways of playing it. I, I know a lot of people, like, especially some of my old school friends that are looking forward to this. And the fact that this game, uh, some of the arcade games are going to be online, I believe, four player online. Yep. And that's like the biggest thing. So as far as emulation, there's nothing on here to worry about. Like everything looks like it's going to be easy and great. There's nothing that's 
been an issue with emulation that I know of those games. I may be wrong, but I think pretty much everything's, I mean, it, I think, we, we've seen it run before. Good. I think the only issue I have with this collection is that, well, there's actually two, is that I have all of these games already, either in emulation or the cartridge form or, you know, whatever. I can play these games, no sweat. The other issue I have with it is the price. It's 40 bucks. And for me, that's just a little bit too steep. I would like to see it come in around the $20, $25 price range uh, just to make it more accessible. Because to quite frankly, a lot of the people who like these games have been playing them now for several years, several decades even. So, um, yeah. I'm so these really... games have been like re-released um, like on PS3, PS4, 360, Xbox One, you're saying? Or um, well, is that what no, you mean? I'm saying, I'm saying that like, the people who love these games already have them. Um, this is a good collection for somebody who doesn't have every one of those games though. Um, but just to me, like the price is just, it's 40 bucks. It's like, it's, it's a little bit too steep for me, especially for some uh, emulation. <laughs> go ahead, UAG. You don't I, have to I, raise I your hand. Go. Go. Because <laughs> Los, Los, I, I understand where you're coming from, but the average consumer that doesn't have a Raspberry Pi, that doesn't have doesn't these know to. nefarious ways of uh, doing things that might be not on the up and up, right? May <laughs> look at this and say, oh, 40 bucks. I could get on this. I could play with my friends. I don't got to do any kind of coding. Don't got to do no no stuff. Um, don't have to find the perfect ROM. Don't have to get fight kid. Don't have to do those things. I think for that, that's a great value. Now, don't get me wrong. They are double dipping with throwing titles of like saying the NES and then a Genesis version of it. But to play online with your friends, I mean, it's 40 bucks or 700 bucks and get an RK one up or, yeah. you know, knowing how to do the things on a Raspberry Pi. You know, so I, personally, I think that this is a, a, a sweet spot. It's not a full game price of like 60 bucks, 70 bucks. I mean, you know, I, I again, I get where you're coming from, but I think for the average consumer that just want turn and key, this is a pretty good value, bro. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a lot of good value. Look how many games are on there. Like it's only a couple bucks each one. I think forty dollars isn't e much at all. If they would have done sixty, that would have been crazy. But forty bucks. Well, let me just. Bucks, back, I, I just want to back up Los really quick because, like, if you, if Los, if you're anything like me, I see new collections like this, and I'm just like, that's going to go on sale for twenty bucks Black Friday, easy. Yeah. Like, and then I just wait like the few months for for that sale to happen because those sales go happen like clockwork, you know. And we oh, can yeah. pre we can predict oh. basically what titles are going to be on those on those sale prices, you know. So I think yeah. like as far as like. Yeah, forty dollars. Like that's a good starting price. That's probably not what I'd be willing to pay for it. Like day one. Like to be totally honest, I don't know if I would buy this day one. But twenty bucks. That's like you know an impulse buy all day for me personally. We gotta um, remember that this is Konami who don't do haven't been doing shit really. Yeah, lately. that's true. Like they haven't done anything. So <laughs> if you're a if you're a supporter of Konami, you're like you know what I want them to do other things. I want them to to bring out other titles and not um keep their ip then you want to be a supporter You're like you know what let me support them so they know that i'm interested in this stuff with the um type type of stuff and they'll do more um, if, because, I, if you recall you know, though um konami did issue a contra collection as well as a they did. Castlevania collection that when it came out it was uh i don't know what the price was but 22, I saw right? twenty nine dollars. I think it was twenty nine dollars. Twenty nine dollars. Yeah. And I saw. I, I, to be honest, I'm happy because I'm 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 like all of us. We are collectors, but this type of games, I'm not gonna be able to buy them. Most of them. So for me, it's like, yeah, like I want that in my collection. And it's, the price for me is okay. Yeah, and that for collector, the first this is the first time that I know of that the arcade of Turtles has been released physical. Yeah. So it's and definitely... online. And all and, in one one package. And like I what mean, UAG said with the licensing, you know, Nickelodeon wants a, is mm -hmm. going to get a cut, or, or with the everybody turtles, wants right? some money. Yeah, so everybody's going to get to eat on this one. That's I'm actually not... something I did want to ask about was um like as far as like the accessibility for console ports of these games. I know like from listening to y'all's podcasts like recently, you're you're mentioning like oh some titles are you know locked up by you know um, the IP holders and not uh, really able to be ported as much as the demand is there for them um are there any like key titles that we should be aware of that aren't accessible right now like at least like through like licensed uh ports 
for this no but maybe the only issue that you might have is the the uh the jingles for the for the uh arcade realms like the original soundtrack um oh, yeah. i know before, prior they had some issues where they had to actually pull the original song so i think they worked that out and they have it on the most recent release of rk one up so i'm assuming that they've worked out that issue but that's something that could be a possibility so it's not exactly what you remember when you were in the arcade but oh, it's that, they're close huge. enough yeah that's because cool. on the on the gamecube uh one of the turtles games you can unlock the arcade game and it's a different song and it doesn't feel the same man oh, like when wow. I, I did all it that don't hit, they it. don't hit the same yeah they don't hit so, the same. Yeah. Oh. what song is it i'm just the, curious. The, the the whole music for the the <laughs> first arcade game Basically, like the the song the from whole... the Saturday morning cartoon. Wow. Are you talking about that? Yeah, yeah. They, wow. they they pulled that from the original um ROM, like all the music in the arcade. Get... It was on there, but then the first um iteration of Arcade One Up's machine, they had to pull that oh. because they didn't make a deal with the uh, composer. Damn. So they did a, a new edition and now on this one i believe they fixed that they they, they were able to work the deal out so you, you got to remember when you have ips you have you have nickelodeon which is viacon you have the the composer of the music there's a lot of you know moving parts to get this thing to, to get out the door and then you got konami so if everybody's not on the same page shit can fall sideways real fast Mm -hmm. Sorry, Los, were you about to say something before oh, I no, asked I was going to say that I, I'll probably be picking it up when it drops, just like the uh, Castlevania and the Contra collection did. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's it's a great collection, uh, especially if you don't have these ROMs. Um, but for me, I, yeah, I'll, I'll be picking it up later on when the price drops, I think. Totally. Yeah. As far as like the changes to these ports, like, as for, like due to lack of licensing for like either it'd be like brands that were featured in the original game or music does that necessarily wreck your experience playing it or is the game still playable like is the um like the um the one-to-one -one button input and uh things like that is that still as satisfying as the arcade version or is it still sort of lacking in your experience i'll jump in it is exactly the same to be honest with you the only thing like i said the, the music is is more for the nostalgia that's the only thing that misses but everything else like it's you know one-to-one -one. it's really amazing yeah. you know these these games aren't hard to emulate to be quite yeah. honest with you um hey, uh, you know, you know a what, potato you know can can do it it's <laughs> <laughs> a random question i have for you guys i'm not sure that dude this bothers me it's always bothered me with i, I always change the button input and i always like because I like to keep my button inputs exactly like how the arcade kind of had it. But on the Turtles one, I think the jump was first and then it was attack. And then on Turtles in Time, the sequel, it switches and it bothers me. I don't know which one I like more. So oh, <laughs> it, wow. it, it, it just like it, I'm not sure if you guys noticed that, like they switched it up on both arcades. Like if you look at the arcade panels, the control panels, it, it's like, I don't know. I that bothers me. I like to try to play things how the arcade was. Hey, hey, uh, shut up. Show brought up, I, show brought up a good point about um, using arcade sticks. Um, for console release um, of arcade games, do y'all play with, you know, the actual, like, con console controller? Or do you buy, like, a third-party arcade stick? You got to play the original, baby. I got I to gotta play with the sticks and buttons. You know, it just doesn't feel the same. It, it uh, he lies because we, we play arcade games on, on our show. How are you going to tell me? Yeah, you fucking my lie, computer. dude. You it's used the system. damn controller. Man, fuck you. Yeah, you were using the controller Whatever, and all this, bro. man. I'm not talking to you no more. And he was talking. <laughs> you, you know what? He he was making fun of me in the community for using the keyboard on, on some of the arcade yes. things. I was the doing keyboard. <laughs> oh, I, okay. You we know, were just talking about man. like oh, oh, arcade gatekeepers. It sounds like some hardcore gatekeeping right yeah. here. No damn keyboard. God didn't create it that way. Now you're bringing the good Lord's name into this. You're not going to the arcade with this. I'm like, oh man, here's my keyboard, baby. Let's play some street fighters. Perfect. It's perfect. The thing is, um, actually, the games weren't designed to have keyboard, like the inputs like a keyboard. But I can, like, certain games, I, I could, I don't want to say it's cheating. Mortal Kombat. But it's kind of cheating. And I do it on purpose to piss this guy off. So 
it's a thing with him. It works too. Los, how about you? Like, um, when you play arcade games at home, do you play with like an, a third party arcade stick, the console controller, a keyboard? What's your, your preference? No, I, I usually just play with a USB um, Xbox controller. I just, yeah. I found it more comfortable to play like that. Um, although I do appreciate the arcade sticks, I just don't have the room for it. I have very limited space. Uh, That's fair. Little man cave. <laughs> yeah, That's obviously. Exactly. I'll play any way that has the advantage. Keyboard, yeah, we anything. Know this. We know this. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> One more collection before we jump into the uh, cabinet side of the um, discussion. The Neo Geo Pocket Color Collection. So this one, uh, another um, uh, similar IP collection that we talked about with the Capcom one. But um, yeah, the Neo Geo Pocket Color, I actually never owned one of these. So this is actually pretty enticing for me personally to potentially own. I don't know if y'all have um, any particular nostalgia for this console or if, um, oh, sorry, I did not add it yet. Okay, this is what I've been talking about. Yeah, the Neo Geo Pocket Color Collection. So I never owned this console. I don't know if y'all did, um, but is this something that entices y'all as arcade gamers or is this something that uh, kind of flew under your radar and it's not really something you would pick up? Is it worthwhile in your opinion? I think it's worthwhile. I never grew up with the Neo Geo. Um, I was poor as a kid. S I could save. not afford, <laughs> no, I could not afford that. <laughs> <laughs> I could not afford any of the Neo Geo stuff, but uh, I've always was interested in it. And for, for me, I think that that's a good collection to have, especially on the Switch where it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, um, it's a good machine for this, this type of game. Just with Metal Slug, just with Metal Slug, that's enough. I'm happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like Slug how they broke it. I like how they showcased how the um, the two player tabletop version plays. I don't know if y'all are um, um, have a lot of experience with like tabletop arcade options, but this like low key reminded me of it. Even though it's not technically an arcade um, game, it's like a handheld collection game. It did sort of like feel like it overlapped a little bit with what we were talking about, so I wanted to bring it up. Oh yeah, Neo Geo and all those SNK games, those fighting games, it overlaps with uh, arcade big time. But I never had this handheld. I think it's cool. It's not anything that I'm gonna pick up because this is something that I I don't have the nostalgia to want to buy. It's something that I'll either get on my modded Switch or or something like that. Like I'm not gonna pay for it. You know, UHG makes fun of me for when I do that shit. The the other thing is that the Neo Geo was really weird. Was a real weird console. I barely saw those in Puerto Rico. When I used to really live in Puerto Rico, I barely barely saw this. Oh yeah. Like the Neo Geo was offering what like um like legit arcade experiences at home, yeah. right? Like they use yeah. like um arcade ROMs and, yep. and and arcade hardware as well in the console, right? Yeah. Card oh, like expensive too. Yeah. See, for for They've me, they've been expensive, I, I, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to echo the sentiment of. Uh, OTG, there's no nostalgia for me for these particular titles. I mean, anytime I wanted to play a Neo Geo game, I'll just go to my local laundromat and play because you know those were those games. But um, but be, that being said, um, you know it does you know get a good value in terms of the collection of games for your uh, your Switch. So I think any anytime a company releases a compilation like that, it does a lot to further the arcade agenda and. That's what I'm all about is like, I like it that these companies are, are re-releasing these things in the compilations. The emulation is good and it gives it, it just revives these games that have been long gone from the conversation. I mean, I can't tell you how many Elden Ring uh, posts I've seen on yes. my time feed and <laughs> a bunch of stuff you hardly <laughs> ever see any. <laughs> I'm talking to you, uh, Ken. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, you know, hardly ever see any like good arcade content like that. And so I'm I'm appreciative of companies like this doing this. Los, real quick, I, I want I want to hear your your thing on this because a lot of times people say, you know what, um, I have these um, you know images from my retro pie, blah 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 blah, because they don't give us the option to buy these games. There's no other way to get these games. Now you're having all these companies coming out with their own compilations, all these collections. And now, so now you have a way to play these games mm -hmm. um, and have online, uh, you know, abilities, whether it's leaderboards, uh, co-op, things like that. So these are things that, you know, I guess the community has been crying for for a long time. And now we, we have these. What do you say to that? I think it's a good thing. Um, I I recently, well, not recently, but I've had the uh, Capcom Arcade Stadium collection vowing never to buy it precisely because i already have them you know elsewhere i can play them but 
you know what they did was they did they did a dope man dope man uh scenario where they gave you the crack which was ghosts and goblins in 1942 as a little gateway drug they gave me that taste of that meth man and <laughs> after that after playing it on the switch i was like damn i have to have every single game in this collection so i picked it up and it's one of my most played games on the switch now i just the other day i finished playing uh warriors of fate and uh loved it never played that game before and you know i was thinking like if i wouldn't have picked this collection up i would have never had the opportunity to play this game just because i never it never would have been on my radar so i think it's 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 a good thing uh, to have these uh, and make them accessible for people. I mean, with a Switch or PS4, you can play these games wherever, you know, even on mobile. I see arcade stuff on mobile games. Um, so I think it's a great thing. Now, how I see it is uh, with this game collection coming out, it dropped the prices of the original games. It popped the freaking bubble that we have right now. Because retro, retro, retro collecting is really expensive right now at the moment. Like yep. way beyond expensive. And with this companies grew up in this collections back and we have been able to have it in uh, in physical, it kind of popped the ball from the really old stuff, I, in, in my opinion, because I have seen a few presses drop after a few collections have come down. When, when you can get um, a Nintendo Switch, um, you know, subscription and get those collections of old games and you got yeah. a game in there that's like $400 and you got it on your collection for 50 bucks for the year, you're like fuck you i don't have to buy that shit no more and then no, they're like there is, oh wow man wow. there is an audience though that lives and hunts these games and that you know they make their videos about game hunting and you know buying a little samson for 15 bucks and then parading that around the internet uh as if that's a good thing well you rip somebody off first yeah. of all so is that a good thing that you yeah, bought that a little samson that, well, the that, joke will be on them because that'll be a repro that they just bought. Yeah, but that's that's what I that's what I like about all this situation because it's making that bubble actually trying to be pop already because it's getting way yeah. too out of hand. Maybe it'll bring the prices back to to normal. Maybe, yeah. maybe that I, will help. I don't think that'll happen. Well, because let me it, um let me just quickly like um use this as a segue to our topic about arcade cabinets because um the comparison between like authentic hardware from like 20 plus years ago or so versus like the um i arcade or the arcade one up you know version of that uh, that same cabinet or those same games it's kind of like an ongoing discussion that i've been really fascinated to learn more about so i wanted to jump into the first um uh brand that I want to you know have the discussion on um arcade one-ups so that's definitely one that like me as someone who isn't really too savvy on you know the market for you know these um at-home solutions i wanted to ask folks uh their opinion los i know you mentioned uh that you have some opinions on arcade one-up that i definitely want to get your take on while i'm pulling them up yes i do and i've had a love and hate relationship with arcade one-up on one hand i think that they are excellent and that they make arcade gaming accessible and they bring up these titles that have long been dead and they make them more accessible and more affordable their compact size is is really highly appealing and i think that it's it's gotten arcades into the conversation for that i i love the way that they have have put all of these arcade machines out again my gripes with them have more to do with the quality of the cabinets themselves and that I did I don't get the same feeling that I get when I'm like on a full size arcade than I do on an arcade one up and that's not a not either a good thing or a bad thing that's just how I grew up you know I, I grew up in the arcades where you know you would have you would be surrounded by full size cabinets and you know people would be there they would congregate whether they were at a Street Fighter 2 machine and people would gather around and like I remember being on Street Fighter 2 machines and there being like barely any room uh, to fight against, you know, whoever put a quarter next next to you. And people would actually get in, in fisticuffs, man. They would brawl just because they'd be like, bitch, move over. You know, I'm trying, I'm trying to try to get on my uh my Street Fighter 2. And then people are like, all right, we'll see who's the who who's the better Street Fighter in real life, motherfucker. And they go outside and then, you know, really? it, it'd be all bad. And so I just can't. To me, I don't get the same feeling, that same feeling, I guess, of danger. <laughs> and 
and nostalgia that I do um, playing an, a full size arcade. So, I mean, I guess that's that would be one of my gripes. The other gripe that I have is, is again, the price. Um, and I know I sent you some arcade cabinets uh, yep. earlier. Um, the price is pretty high up there when it comes to that. I mean, here is a an original Mortal Kombat 3 arcade machine that I found on, um, I think it was Facebook Marketplace. And it's 500 bucks for a full size machine. Now that's that's Dude, more or less the same. I, I got to jump on this. Yeah, man. you know those. Will go for <laughs> Come on. Low, Come slow, on, bro. bro. How that's many times scam. have you went into the Facebook Marketplace and found one of these? These Chips are for few 80. Come on. And far I found between, this one, and bro. I found another one too, though. I found oh, the um, the these are full, ones full and far like, between, and this is very regional. Is this, this is I a mean, very regional thing. Yeah, like one in Oakland. If you if you live in a, like a like a, a oh in Oakland, I gotta go area, pick that up. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, these are hard to, to come by. There's there's not like a store that's selling you know Mortal Kombat threes and stuff like that to, to get, especially at these kind of prices. I mean, granted, you you brought a lot of valid points up, and I and I can agree on on some of those things like you know and, quality the pricing uh, and, the, the space and things like that and you what, know UAG, i mean one of my gripes you know with the space with the arcade one-ups is the same gripe i have with full-size arcades is that they're too damn big and i don't have any room for them in my man cave i don't know if you can see it it's on this side it's a street fighter 2 uh full-size cabinet that's the only one i have i want to have more you know, um, I know Ret Retro Rick has like a whole house full of these things. Uh, um, this guy, uh, Big Retro Family. Big Family Gaming. Oh my God, that guy has so many. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I wish I had that room to Whoa. do it. I just don't. And but that's where th I that's the that beautiful thing one. about RK One Up, though. Like yeah. you can, you I can, agree with that. you can replicate having a, a, a arcade cabinet with a fraction of the size. And yeah. yes, it's not going to give you the exact uh feel of having the arcade but imagine you know 20 years ago you would be playing these games on your consoles and you wanted to have replicate that and this is the best thing that we've currently have like we were as kids were like looking at silver spoons like yo i want a house like that <laughs> and now we have the ability yeah. to do that like yeah. that, 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 that you brought my that mind has fucking blown when i was when i first was walking down a, uh, in a walmart walking down the aisle and i saw a mortal kombat 2 i was like damn i need that in my house i don't <laughs> care what it costs i'm getting it and i got it in my house and i was like taken back like if you could see me, I, I would have thought I was like, you know, 20 years ago playing in the arcade and having that feeling come back instantaneously. I could smell the pizza in the pizza shop. I can, you know, feel the stickiness on the floor from the gum. It, <laughs> it, it, it brought you back. And that is something that Arcade One Up is selling. you. They're not selling you the damn game or the cabinet. They're selling you a feeling. And that feeling is n like none other. And you, the only way you can get that high again is by getting the next cabinet, it seems like. You well, know let me, I, let, oh, you oh say? yeah yeah i was actually gonna um pivot off of y'all's point of like okay they're kind of selling you the nostalgia feel of like you know getting that flashback to the pizza mm. parlor and like having your buddies you know crowd around you like in this third picture yeah. right here but like what i was like going to ask was um i noticed that there are oftentimes re-releases of these consoles like um like with like updates or whatever i know that y'all prob are probably a lot more knowledgeable on that than i am but i wanted to know like is that necessarily something that a consumer who's just getting started and finds their favorite IP on one of these things needs to worry about? Or are there are there significant changes in the updates that are going to make someone want to, you know, like sell their original um, uh, arcade one up and get the up latest upgraded version? Is Because uh, that doesn't seem like a really like consumer friendly practice if you're going to keep re-releasing the console with more updates instead of just delivering the updates through software updates to the the first version of the console you know well, yeah it can't be updated with with software for the most part because there are physical changes that's that's being updated in that sense so i mean uh, otg would be a perfect example to talk about this because he's oh. has um cabinets that have had updates um and were on the fence of doing the upgrade but for the for the for the most part the the normie the person who just uh, you know just wanting to get a cabinet to get it They'll, they'll be okay with you know if there's an upgrade fine they, they're good with the cabinet that they have but there's the hardcore collectors like man i want these particular upgrades i've always wanted them i wish they, they came out originally with these 
Um, I want to hear. But, I want to hear what OGT um, can tell us about the uh, a track mode, uh, that big the track mode controversy. Can you tell us about that? The, the track mode. I, I, I'm kind of confused. Are you, you know what he's talking about? UAG a track the, mode. I think oh, he's talking uh, about spectator the, mode. Spectator mode. Spectator mode. Spectator All right. Mode. So, so you know what? That that'll go into what I was gonna say earlier. Um, as far as, let me answer real quick the upgrades. It depends on the cabinet, but definitely uh, there are a lot of upgrades I see. I'm like, mm, I don't care about that. But like that one, that one picture you had right now showed a golden tea. I have the original golden tea. It took a couple years. They stopped selling that. They came out with this golden tea at a really good price, five ninety nine, and it is the first cabinet that doesn't have a riser. So it's taller, it's bigger, it's got a bigger 19 inch screen versus a 17 inch. It's a five by four weight ratio, which kind of sucks. It's not four by three, but it is a 19 inch. And it Sorry, is which one? That, the golden, that golden one. tee, second the second one. one to the right. It's one panel versus the box on the bottom. Like it doesn't have a riser and it's a lot taller, almost giving you a more real uh, full size arcade experience. Not really, it's still, you know, a home arcade, but it mimics a real arcade like the closest that arcade one up has done so i i think something like this i was uh actually it says 699 there but it there's stores that sell it for 599 correct uag the best buy i, I, I believe or, so. oh no I'm not that might be the price no it no be it 700. was seven no this is the right price all right I, I was i was thinking something i was getting mixed up but to me i was like oh i wanted it so much but i already have the original it doesn't look as cool and this has a few more games but I'm like, it's not worth it for me. So I don't think they are doing anti-consumer stuff by upgrading at all, but it, it all depends who you ask. To me, it's it's a lot nicer, but it's been a while since I could, my, uh, my the little arcades hold value, believe do, it or do, not. Do, do people get upset when a new iPhone comes out and they have a new camera and they have a bigger screen uh, uh, and they uh, have uh, double the- uh, I mean, that's, the that's a good argument. I will give yeah. you that. I was just curious if like the genuine, general consensus in the community is if there is frustration about the re-release oh, of yeah. cabinets it's but it seems happening. like there isn't <laughs> there, 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 there is there's a good in percentage any community. That, that do get upset but you know i don't think that they are not seeing it as a consumer <laughs> i'm not a consumer but a, of a business practice like yeah. businesses have to be in the business of making money they're not non-profit organizations yeah, and i don't I want to answer Lose's that. question that he asked me i haven't answered it yet it's gonna right. be a long way oh yeah uh, go ahead he he did he he did ask me uh, about the spectator mode now i i want to just say like the the whenever lo said that it doesn't feel like you you know what he remembers at the arcade like a full-size machine it it doesn't as far as the control panel a lot of things you got to do you got to upgrade the sticks and buttons there's there's third-party people who make control panels that are bigger so you have more room there's all stuff you can do to it to mimic it but the one thing that mimics it the the, the feeling of being crowded around people is now with technology they are online a lot of these fighting games are getting online almost every game is getting online now there's a mode called spectator mode on some of these cabinets on most of them in spectator mode people can be online on their cabinet and watch the people fighting so if there's a community of a lot of us friends that have the cabinet we can run tournaments and spectator mode is important in running tournaments because we can host them online and everyone can see the fights and it's almost the feeling of you had when you're online like i could be playing uag we could pump up this fight all our friends on youtube will get excited it's like we'll virtually be being in, in the arcade it's almost like being in the arcade but you're at home and you see everyone over here smack talking and all kinds of stuff. So that brings back that that feeling I had with, when I was a kid because of spectator mode. Now, Killer Instinct came out at the price of $700. And when we found out that there was no spectator mode, we were upset. I, I was really upset. I voiced my opinion because I felt like that, that feeling of hosting tournaments, of us seeing each other play you could use that to your advantage and look at good players learn from them it's almost like being an arcade if you're watching behind the screen you know watching people play so i made a big stink about it but now that time has gone by i really don't care because that killer instinct is really good like it i i didn't like it at first i had issues with mine but all the issues have been fixed arcade one ups customer service um sent me a new pcb my issues fixed now so i'm not complaining anymore but I do wish it had it. I do. Like, if it was my choice, I would want Spectator all the way. But I'm like, did, you know what? It's, I, I don't know. It's, I kind of got used to it, I guess. But if they ever they do it, update, it it'd be in nice. There. Why, did they, why didn't they include it in there, do you think? At, at least from what I understand, it's something through Code Mystics of who did it. Like, they weren't told 
to do it. And I, I think that's the reason why. I, I don't know. UAG could answer that one more. He knows more it, about it, that. It's two. It's twofold. Um, th- spectating on on RK One wasn't a big thing when they originally got this pe- um, project. Like this is two years in the making, and within the last year or so, that's when spectating on RK One really be- hit the bubble and burst. So if they knew that it was going to be as big as it was, that probably would have been factored in in terms of the pricing of the project for code mystic that's one and second it probably also would have impacted the emulation of this it's a marvel that they've were able to get killer instinct to work on the chipset that they do have these machines running on um so the fact that they were able to minimize the lag and and have online gameplay running as smooth as it is it probably was a sacrifice like hey we can get this but it might jump up the the um you know the lagging so what which one do you want do you want it to run smooth or do you want to see people play i think well, the, well really the, quick the, i do want to ask um uh for for los and ken as far as like the value proposition for like these at home solutions with like the online play and the spectator mode um like are those things that you necessarily weigh in as far as like when you're uh, put, let's say you you have space for you know your ideal you know, cabinet at home. Like, do these features like necessarily matter for your own playing experience, or are you just looking to solo play like your favorite arcade games? It wouldn't, like, it wouldn't as matter. As be, it wouldn't matter because I will just bring my my the friends or my kids or my friends to come over home and we drink and we will be playing. Even mm-hmm. though I don't have permission to have one, but <laughs> if I had, <laughs> of course, it will be just for playing myself and my kids and my friends when they come home. Yeah, I will not use the online. If if I had the space, I would definitely try to recreate a full size arcade, uh, a full size arcade. Right now, I currently have a Street Fighter Two machine and a pinball machine, um, but I want more pinball machines and I want more full size arcade machines, and I just don't have the space for it. But it's definitely, yeah. uh, you know, that's one yeah. of the th- good things about Arcade One Up is that they're smaller. You can fit a bunch of them you know in in a relatively smaller space i just i just don't have any damn space man well let me well the i was asking like let's say you had like you know the ideal amount of space and uh you had access to your ideal cabinet like do the um um the features for like spectator mode and like online play like the ones that like we've been discussing are those necessarily ones you weigh into the value of like that purchase or uh, no, you not necessarily I, care about those things no i don't consumer. i don't really care about them i will just invite my boys over and we just play like I don't, i'm not a big online gamer to begin with uh you know i'm more of a solo non-online gamer um person if, if you will los can i ask you a question yeah you, you, you you're you're a street fighter guy yeah so how many how many times can you really enjoy yourself playing the 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 ui on, on street fighter like i mean if you have friends over i guess that's fine but yeah. playing the ui over and over it has to be tedious yeah Depends no, you're right. one too. <laughs> and i play it every time i have a gathering here uh i don't get enough play out of it as i want to but um i mean that's a good point but yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't. There's just no way around it. It's because I don't have gatherings all that often, especially with COVID, and mm-hmm. it's it's been tough. Um, and it's hard to say if I would play it more if I was able to play online, uh, because I own the the Street Fighter fighting collections for the PS4, and I can play those online too. But I I just don't. I don't know why. I think it's mainly because I have so many damn games. I have to, I'm spread thin in the world of uh, gaming, you know, I have to choose what game I'm going to play. Agree. This is why I like the, how our panel dynamic is sort of split between like, you know, kind of like the casual gamers and the casual arcade gamers and then like the hardcore like arcade gamers, you know, like talking about all the like, you know, the different value sets mm-hmm. in in the systems. But uh, really quick, I wanted to shout out uh, Tony from the Geek Getaway donated uh, $15. Thank you so much. Um, Arcade one ups are lame. Stop looking backwards and start (laughs) moving forward. Now smash that like button and show Rhea some love. Thank you so much, Tony. I really appreciate the support. Um, Tony? I I don't endorse this comment, but I I will accept I'm going to give him a thumbs up on the $15, but lame. (laughs) 
I think not, buddy. I think not. You know what? Tony's an amico lover. So oh, I, I'm just gonna leave it. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> you should have told me that from the beginning. No, 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 no. no you, he's the biggest <laughs> anti-amico <laughs> person out oh, there. That, that yeah. still explains a lot. Oh, gosh. No. I'm an amico oh, lover. Yeah. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> um, yeah. Really quick, I'm going to jump into the um, I arcades because I want to get y'all's take on um, if there really is like a significant difference between arcade one ups and I arcades, like from a consumer standpoint. Like, oh, yeah. say, like if you're recommending one or the other to a casual, for example, um, while I'm pulling that up, um, can y'all give me like a rundown between like the differences for for those for y'all? Oh yeah, a casual. I will probably depends how casual they are. The thing about I arcade, it's like a, a console. It's like a store. You buy the games on the store so for a casual it'll be good but the thing that irk lacks right now they're such a small company they lack those titles that a lot of casuals know so if you're like really old school and you remember like burger time you remember kung fu masters there's like little games on there that just i mean there's a lot of titles like those data east titles the, if, if the you're bad a coleco vision atari lover if you like <laughs> that junk that came like in a in a cereal box like you bought it and, and the cartridge would come out. That's the kind of games that you like. Like no, yeah, don't but... get me wrong. There's some titles on there that people love, but um, there's nothing I think that would entice you that says, I gotta get this. I, but you know what? I like the design. Like the design I, cool. I, I like that they're actually doing new games. The Death Cell one. Like that's a mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's arcade. saucy. That's like yeah. crazy. They do yeah, have they're... newer indie titles now. The build quality on these, uh, the, these are their new gold models. The older models, which aren't gonna be much different, uh, you do have more room on the control panel. It just feels like it does. It's a really good quality. It's a 19 inch screen. Um, I, I I got one because UAG, like me personally, I download all my games. I'm like, why am I gonna pay for these games that I download? And it's just running on a Android operating system. I'm like, I don't really care about that, but I got one and I really like it. It's pretty decent, but the games on there are just horrible. Like they need better titles for sure. So it's hard to recommend to a casual. But if it's like an old school gamer that doesn't know much, you know, that doesn't not into the modding stuff, but he knows about these games, this for is sure, hundred percent. Okay, okay. This so let me let, let me get this straight. The RK U is a machine that you can buy the game in the store. So the 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 old RK has like a mini store that you can buy games. Yeah, unfortunately, yes, it you can't buy it on the screen. You have to buy it on your cell phone. <laughs> and it, it's like they're 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 working on getting the store in there. They're a company that uh, hasn't been around too long, so that's why I say they only have like three hundred games right now. But they're gonna get better. They're gonna expand a lot. Only three hundred games on a, on a, on a, on a uh, like an arcade machine. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, but you games. know how many of those games are good? UAG, how many are good? Uh, even even if it's twenty games, if it's twenty games, an R uh, like an arcade one up has what? 12. Yeah. So it is well, cool. they, they, I'm seeing right now this the 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 the, the website and they have a uh, twin hawk they have here. Uh, let me see. I saw one double dragon. They got a lot got... of B, B, B level, C level games. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I love Truxton. I, you know, some people really have a nostalgia for, uh, you know, Space Invaders, you know, Burger Time. These are some titles that, you know, were marquee okay. titles on, 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 um, RK one ups, but nothing for me that's going to move the needle. You know what? So like, hurt? if you had to like, kind of just break it down, like, um, I arcade has like access to older titles, but is the build quality necessarily better than, um, oh, it's better. arcade one ups? It's better. Okay. So oh, better build quality access to more legacy content, but um price is just you know way yeah. too high and their library is smaller actually yeah, i think the price is good for what it is uh their library though they do have indie games that are newer like dead cells they do got uh what are some of the newer better games uag that they have i know that beach buggy racing i don't care about that but they do have some newer indies which is cool that's something that rk went up at the moment doesn't have but, uh but i think they're gonna get some newer titles here soon but anyways the, the, uh away from that it's like I don't know, UG. What do you guys say, man? Uh, I mean, like I said, I think it's a good thing. I think if you purchase this, you're in the hopes of what the future may hold. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's really limited to that. Like right now, they just put online gaming. So I was playing freaking Windjammers yeah. online yesterday. That's a that's a good thing. But um, you know, the future is what what comes next on this. Like they have the hardware. They have the uh, the product. They just need the software to back it up. 
and I seen that they're lowering the price. So little by little, I imagine one of these consoles is gonna go like yeah. one of these arcades is gonna go like five hundred okay. on in the future. I, so I love that you said that. Actually, oh. these are new pre-orders, and they're brand new. That's the new price right now. Like the early bird price, it's gonna go up to a thousand. Oh, it's gonna go to a thousand. Oh. I was gonna say that. Um, I think that I like these a little bit better because mm -hmm. you can download games on them right i That's mean what I yeah and the, the points that you guys were making i agree with all that yeah now there's one thing that arcade went up they haven't released one yet but they're gonna make a premium cabinet called the pro and i i think it's gonna be better build quality than these i'm thinking the way it's going but uh they're supposed to have like yamaha speakers they're supposed to be bigger more full closer to full size but these have really good speakers, like the best speakers in the in the community right now, as far as home arcades. Mm -hmm. um, the software is JBL on those, but on on the on the regular one, on their on their first their old ones, it's actually really good. And there's no name brand branding on it, right? UAG. No, again, the speakers are the same. They're just using software to to kind of boost it up. Yeah. So I mean, he. he um, the, the the makers of this really wanted to make sure that they nailed down the um, the sound because they felt yeah. like that was a lacking of of an arcade went up. And that's one thing I didn't mention. You can uh, they have a jukebox app, so you could play your music through their speakers on this. So you could literally use this cabinet as a jukebox too. And it has HDMI out if you want to stream. So there are some good things with iArcade. I can't deny. I have actually in this room is the only arcade I have is an iArcade. In case I want to stream or make a video real quick. That's pretty awesome. Really quick, I just want to shout out the chat. They're bringing up some really good points, and uh, I got a generous donation from our friend Zod Rider. Um, just tip twenty five dollars. Thank you so much, Zod Rider. I Arcade is the future. Hash or hashtag I Arcade is the future. There is a lot of great stuff on I Arcade and has great potential. Arcade One Up is extremely expensive out the gate and not as high quality. Yeah, that's essentially the um, the breakdown that I wanted to get from just like a beginner standpoint. It seems like I Arcade would be for like the more like uh tenured uh arcade yeah. collector to be to be honest i'm kind of like Thank you so much, i kind of won one of those <laughs> right now oh yeah the I dead cell one looks really clean yeah i like the that dead cell one i'll say uag he thinks it's nasty it looks clean right the artwork's nice, nice. Well, I, I, I can't I deny the how, how beautiful yeah. the artwork like if i was to sell someone on a uh, i arcade i'm like this the artwork and the quality of these units are by are by none the, the best the best yeah. retro mania wrestling is on there too that, that game's pretty decent oh don't get me started on that game oh, you, you know what you're trying to do you know what you're trying to do otg i'm not taking the fate oh, otg i'm not reading the fate. i stopped paying attention to that game are there any updates recently i don't know I oh I um really quick i want to shout out show who um gave me the lowdown on like the uh mr developments for the arcade scene um show says almost would rather build a mr cade with the prices nearing a grand which is a good point for like you know the arcade uh one-ups and the i arcade um show shouted out otg as like someone who follows the mr developments in the arcade oh, yeah, scene and i oh, wanted mr. to get your thoughts on like okay for Maybe it's not the most like, you know, beginner friendly option, but it probably would be the most consumer friendly option. I don't know. I want to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, yeah, Mr. Uh, is definitely uh, a niche product for the hardcore people now. Okay. To set one up is easy now. It used to be hard. There's an actual script the, that will do it. I mean, it, it's just like setting up a, 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 a Raspberry Pi. Like you're, you're just going to put the image in there. But setting up all the ROMs and stuff, it's literally a script that you put on there. And it downloads everything for you. Is, is it as what easy they, as Ficade? No, no, dude, it's, it's it's easier to set up than Ficade to me. But what's up with Mister is it's not your normal downloading ROMs. It's not this and that. It's a project that's ongoing because it uses FPGA. It emulates the hardware. So what these guys oh, are doing okay. is emulating the boards I and stuff like that. So it's accurate, it. like arcade accurate. And uh, there's a lot of uh, developers who are working on things, but there's like one in particular, Jotago, he's doing God's work there, like putting CPS one, CPS two on there. He's really quick. Is this is this what you're is this something that is related to what you're referring that's to? Because one attachment I just, to it. That's, that's only okay. one attachment. It is oh, a very okay. only one that only costs two hundred and twenty five dollars. Yeah. So that's an addition. So to what, doing, what right? is the difference from me having a Mister and then a Shua X four? Like like I got a I got a Raspberry Pi and I got a XU four. 
and XG4 is really strong. It's a really strong uh, mar- motherboard. The Mister uses FPGA like like exactly what is used in the analog consoles. It, it's FPGA. It's not emulation. Oh, it's just yeah. Yeah. It, it's actually emulating the hardware, not the what? software. Oh, OTG, aren't you missing a big portion of this? Like how expensive it is? Oh yeah, go to Mister Add-ons. It's not that bad. If you go it's to Mister Add-ons. Oh, com, so it's not even um, a consumer-friendly no, option. No, for no, a beginner, you would not. I don't you would think not it is. How much it? would it cost okay. to run run one of those setups? How much like? If the price keeps going up. I, I'll, I'll look it up right now. Now I got into it pretty cheap. Now you could buy a bundle. <laughs> I so recommend buying like everything separate. <laughs> but you don't need all the stuff. The extra things. All right. So it, it's kind of like a hamburger. There's like three boards you can buy. The okay. main board, the DT Nano, a DE10 Nano. I don't know how expensive it was. I got it for like one twenty nine. I think back in the that day. Was now the, it's closer that was the, to two hundred. That's the bottom price, board. right? Huh? That was the bottom price. Now, so let's talk about prices today. So and show us saying five hundred to nine hundred. So oh, like, damn. So damn was it. this just for the components, oh, not like the no. cabinet? So like the cabinet is its, is its own thing. The the Mister components you plug into it are gonna run you at least like five hundo, nine hundo. Not it depends if you want to make the arcade the Mister arcade like like that's for hardcore. This is like just hardcore first of all stuff. you're talking like, about like, getting a small right. business loan to get this shit up and running, bro. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna try to share my screen. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, I just wanted to like shout this one out because like I was under the impression that it would be easier for folks to customize their own solution but it seems like it would be a lot more that's, labor yeah. and cost into it instead yeah that's what i second was thinking i was like whoa everybody's talking about the mister maybe yeah, I the mister is awesome oh. i recommend it so this is what you would need this is the brain the the, okay. the d10 nano now for sure to get your roms running like if you want neo geo roms with running neo geo imagine how much it costs for one cart this is the closest you're gonna get to the real stuff none of this emulation it runs a lot better you're gonna need this ram so this 210 plus 65 you're ready in 175 then you get your little sd card and then you're gonna need your power adapter now this is just one board like i said it's like a sandwich that has three boards if you want now the reason you'd want three boards is an io board right here if you want to plug this to a crt you could plug this to a crt and it'll look perfect like the way it was an arcade the other board on the bottom is going to be a usb board you can use a, a regular usb hub or you can buy a usb crying. board which i can't find <laughs> but then the mr Cade, which it was the other one you showed that's a hook that up to an arcade i wish he had the and then if you want a case these cases are, cases are about 70 bucks uh, so why they don't send it in a bundle like, they do. They i'm, I'm okay. looking for it he does have Am- a bundle. go to amazon and see how much how much a bundle but is. i don't know where his bundles are shop so wait okay so while you're looking for that i just kind of want to get a comparison so like the oh, the authentic hardware like you know that will run you 800 to a thousand dollars versus building your own mister and getting your own cabinet and things like that what is going to be the difference for someone who's choosing well, between the two? Oh, uh definitely with the mister you have a lot more games <laughs> okay but, fair enough but uh yeah it's it's definitely um it's for the hardcores. It's not for you, you know a normal person that was to get Raspberry Pi, like someone who's I, I'll into. I'll tell it. OTG. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back OTG on this aspect. If you buy original hardware, original hardware eventually will die. So you're gonna have to know how to fix that shit. Mm-hmm. Whereas you have this. This is new out the gate. It's software for the most part. You're not, that's not, you're not gonna have that issue. So the longevity of of these lasting, will you know be tenfold. Um, so yeah it's more upfront costs but in the long run you should be saving yourself money it's just like how how much are you going to be invested in this hobby yeah like i didn't want to buy one and my friend told me he goes dude you know how much you'll get get a street fighter cabinet and right now you could have this like this is the closest that you're going to get to playing the arcade because with emulation all kinds of factors are in there and i was all like you know what and like mike tyson's punch out like people who play that game like you need like something that's lag free basically lag. like the og hardware and this yeah. will give you that like uh pretty close to lag free so i i don't know like my friend kind of talked me into it with the neo geo games and all this stuff i go man i want to check this out and i didn't believe it but there's something that it just feels different like all my old school uh console games i could play you know nes on here super nintendo sega saturn i'm uh, not saturn they're working on a saturn core <laughs> sega cd like Game Boy. There's so many different cores, and once you get into the scene and, and see what all the developers are working on, it's just it's just a community. Like I love it. Uh, I'm nah, trying to convince 
now they give online updates all the time like they, oh. if you're connected or you had to download the update or how yeah yeah right that is something i did want to ask about for like the um i arcade and arcade one-ups as far as like um the amount of um ongoing maintenance and software updates and quality of life for these consoles that you invest in like i know we made the iphone comparison and those end up you know kind of dropping off where software updates you know are no longer released for certain models but um have we gotten to a point where certain arcade one-ups and um uh irks are no longer being supported with software updates has that happened yet in the market oh uh, for sure like the first couple of generations don't have any kind of um way to get any kind of updates or anything like that there is just a most recently where they have these um have wi-fi capabilities where you can get upgrades and stuff like that and i'm sure that they won't last for long i mean you know after they feel like they've you know got it to perfection not going to do anything to for it for longevity yeah, that's what arcade went up, up. Yeah. irk is the opposite like irk will will be there for the long haul but again how long is that company going to last oh uh los were you about to say i have a question for you raya out of all of these solutions you not being really an arcade gamer um what sounds more appealing to you and, and why <sighs> yeah um Again, like I'm still a beginner, so I'm kind of like stuck between, okay, do I want to, um, I mostly care about the IPs and the one-to-one -one match to the arcade port doesn't necessarily matter too much to me because I am a beginner slash casual. So like if I got like a Mortal Kombat cabinet from arcade one up or, um, uh, or something along those lines, I would probably be really stoked on it just cause like the aesthetic is, you know, something I'm looking for and um just like the accessibility of being able to play those games like i've never played an, an arcade one up mortal kombat cabinet so i don't know how that experience is like if it's even comfortable am i gonna like enjoy you know playing it or anything like that but i think it's more about like the aesthetic and the accessibility to um my favorite ips that i'm mostly concerned about at me as a consumer anyway yeah that's a good that's a good response one one thing though we talked about we you know all this conversation but if you were just an average consumer that had limited space and had you know you don't care about the look there's actually a machine that kills them all what and and that's an ug ugly betty back here oh don't start the, the, dude that the is a oh, i have to look that up what is that Which one? the what legends is... ultimate right 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 behind oh, me yeah. it's a it's an ugly bitch I'll but she gets the job done <laughs> she can play any game that you want and you have the controls like you have a trackball you have a spinner and it's affordable and you have a 23 inch screen and it can play with bezels i mean the the, the options are endless you can hook that up to steam it does anything and anything what? now let me wow. tell you it, it's not there's certain things that make it very user friendly in terms of there's people that in the community that make this a, a viable option with coin ops X. Um, but then it, there's options where you could really get crazy, but you have to know what you're doing. You kind of need like a, a freaking engineer degree in some aspects of it. You can play pinball and stuff. Yeah, they got so, pinballs. Yeah, I was seeing that address now. <laughs> that's what the buttons on the side so are for. This this is an option that people sleep on. Again, she's an ugly individual, but the <laughs> things that she'll do for you. <laughs> oh my god! I've always thought that Ad Games wasn't a good quality kind it, of. It, it, you, this 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 broke the mold for them. Like this Legends Ultimate line of of things, they really stepped their game up, um, and and tried to get away from that. Like, don't get me wrong. They have done some shitty things in the past, and they came out with a controller that made me feel like they were going backwards. But on this particular line, even the the, the biggest haters of haters of ad games have to say like, it's it's legit. I'm a big hater, nah, it's not. But uh, their pinball, their pinball is where it's at. I think that's where they went good is their pinball. So this 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 is like a huge like. Um comparable to um old school arcade sized um unit right yeah, here yeah it's 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 tall enough it's wide enough the, the the deck is wide enough again now if if you bought this for just what it came with you're gonna be pissed off because those 300 games are not great games hey, how about the internet you're buying it for what it can do 
not for what it it, it is. All right, I'm, I'm approved to UAG that it, it don't be uh uh over hyping this UAG. How how is it when you stream the Steam? Is it is how's the lag? I have no lag because I I plug it directly to my um my unit. So right now, right now he's on pay, right? All right, UAG, I got to ask you another question. How's the online? You 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 host it every Thursday. How's the online? Oh, now, I will say on now if you're playing arcade net. <laughs> trust and believe if you pay for that bitch, you're going to be upset. If you get it for free, I get it. you'll be all right. But again, that's the beautiful thing about that. It's not set in one lane. Oh you got to know what you're getting into. If you're buying it for 300 games that's on it, you'll be going to be pissed off. If you're buying it for Arcade Net, you're going to get pissed off. But if you buy it for the shit that it can do, Point you out. won't be very happy. Well, you can mod that. You can. That's a moddable arcade cabinet that you can. This is dude, the company freaking lets you do D, This is um a, basically a DIY <laughs> I, um, DIY I kit. It can do anything. You don't have to build it. You just put the stuff on it. Like you can hook a Raspberry Pi to this. You can hook a PC that has coin ops on it. It, 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 from it USB. basically uses it as a as a controller or usb that'd be cool yeah the interface actually has you download the application coin ops whatever to launch it you have to okay. do the rest on your usb but the company uh the, the company has it in their software in fact people got pissed off because during the update they broke they it where the coin promote, ops work and they're like we're sorry we fixed piracy. It. and i love it and why don't you like it otg all right, I don't. I, it looks ugly. First of all, now I got the little version, which is just uh, a little single fi stick that that mm -hmm. has a little hockey puck unit that you does the same thing. So it's for the at home version that somebody that doesn't want to arcade. Now the reason I don't like it because on that is not as powerful hard as that. It runs really bad, and I don't believe UAG when he says it runs pretty good. But it's like Dude, the online. I, I'm broken. not gonna lie to you, bro. It's broken. Like I, it? I'm telling you, it, the processing power on the unit is different is just is just different and yeah so it runs a lot smoother now I, again he's a very like finicky on terms of like he wants things to run exactly as smooth like probably the usb um version of it is not going to be to his up to his standards but if you're doing it with the pc yeah you, yeah. you can't come you, can, you can't knock that shit baby can't. But at that point it's like i have that on my Wah. pc just throw it in a one-up which i've done it's so you, you easy can. like it but, yeah when you're talking about a, a unit that's five hundred dollars, you just plug it in there and it does everything, and it has superior hardware in terms of the buttons, the joystick, the screen. Well, why why put it in something that's subpar? Well, really quick, screen, I do want to. I do want to ask um, Los, um, what are your thoughts on some of these solutions that that we discussed? Like, are you more in, like? If you had the choice to go with like the I Arcade or um, the Legends Ultimate, like that we we're that we we're discussing, or even um, the Arcade One Up, which I know you're a big critic of, would you rather just you know invest in the authentic hardware, or are you just fine with like playing these games on your console? What are your thoughts? I think that that I don't know that at Games Legend is it seems promising. I mean. UAG was saying that you can mod it and hook it up to a PC, a Raspberry mm -hmm. Pi. I mean, that's all you really need right there. Um, but for me, I will always be an original arcade cabinet person. I will always favor an original arcade more than any other solution. I don't care what it costs. My problem is I don't have any space. That is the only problem that I have. I have the budget to buy whatever arcade I want. I just don't have anywhere to put them. Um, I think that you know, at the same time, I think that there's no wrong way to play these games. If you're playing them via uh, app games or if you're playing them on Arcade 1UP or on your Switch, I think it's a good thing on your Raspberry Pi. As long as you're playing the games, I, yeah, yeah, there's no yeah. hate in my heart for you. So, Yeah, definitely. I know that there's like, you know, some contention around like the value proposition for some of these solutions and like the ease of use and all that other stuff. But, um, you know, no one like... I'm definitely not one to, you know, check people's wallets, like, you know, for what they're spending, you know, you do you boo. So that's how, that's, <laughs> that's how I feel at the end of the day. Um, Ken, um, I know you and I kind of like align on our point of view with that, like, you know, yeah. spend the money how you want. Um, if yeah. you want to buy a thousand dollar, you know, arcade one up, go off. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> no crazy. <laughs> no crazy yeah. If yeah, you want, I'm not, I'm, want. Not, I'm not like, you know, throwing shade either. I'm just like, you know, um, yeah, like it's a it's a luxury like to yeah, luxury. Get, to to get into this this hobby, but it's really fascinating for me to learn about. But 
we're coming up on the um, 80 minute mark and I want to be mindful of folks' schedules. I know y'all um, have uh, other commitments later on tonight. So um, thank you everyone for contributing to this um, awesome conversation. I hope um, I could talk to y'all more and learn more about this space in the future, but I definitely want to go around the panel again. Um, Los, thank you so much for uh, coming to join us on the panel. Where can we find you at? Me. Yeah, of course, anytime. Um, you guys where, can find where, me on, uh, on uh, Facebook. You guys can find me on Twitter, on Instagram, and on YouTube, of course. At, it's just at Big Retro Show for all of them. Awesome. And uh, Ken, my awesome co-host, uh, where can we find <laughs> you at? And where, what are you currently working on? Uh, currently, I'm working on I'm, uh, trying to finish the script for uh, Demon Crest, uh, Dem and uh, you can find me on Retro Complex uh, and in uh, Twitter. And my new Twitter is uh, Channel Complex, and that's it. <laughs> Thank you for being here, guys. Really cool, cool, cool. And uh, rolling into uh, OTG, uh, where can we find you at? And um, I know you're going to be hosting a show with UAG right after this, but yeah, yeah. Uh, let's hear you talk. Yeah, I, I got two channels my main channel, Overthink Gaming. I, I haven't made content as much as I would like on that channel, but the one that I'm more focused on is my side channel, which is the arcade hobby that is OTG side piece. And uh, the I do have a weekly show on there with UAG also. So we do three shows together called the Three Amigos. That's with Turbo Joe. He's part of the Amigo slash Retro Community. Good guy. But we have a chemistry of us three that I, I think it was meant to be. And then, like I, I told you, I'm on UAG's channel every Wednesday. But the one where we're going to have uh, Laundromat Wars is going to be on UAG's channel. Make sure you follow your average gamer. That's where he hosts that. It, it's, it's definitely his concept because he you know i was trying to get him a not not me a lot of people were trying to get him to love uh no, neo geo you, games you and he, he referred them to was it me <laughs> to the laundromat and we all rode with that we're like okay let's make a show that you know me and him we, we always talk and i was like dude it's gold it's gold laundromat like we were both loving it and we just did that to give people the opportunity to play these games they may not have so tonight 9 p.m eastern on your average gamer show wow and, you know, he was talking smack about um, Retro Mania Wrestling. And for the most part, I agree with it. I agree with it. Um, so, no, seriously, um, it's all come fun. catch me on there. We, I love being able to have a debate with individuals. Like, we can agree to disagree. You may even change my mind. I'm a very open-minded individual. So come check me out on my channel here, Your Average Gamer. I'm on Twitch, on YouTube, um, you know, Pinterest. I'm on everything, baby. He's on Come a thousand me. channels. I don't know how he does it. Like the three shows, that's not it. This dude works hard. So make sure you guys check him out. Really good guy, man. Check me uh, out. Thank you so up, much uh, for by the way, UAG. Huh? I love your setup in the back. It's pretty cool. I oh, appreciate it, my man. I mean, yours is nothing to sneeze at. I like I like everybody's thing here. As especially, especially my man uh retro complex over there. He over there vibing. He thinks that he's in the back cave and shit. I see you, bro. <laughs> I, I love it. It looks. Yeah, see on the ceiling lights. I know. I need to step my game up for sure. I got all this like natural lighting popping off behind me. Uh, listen, I'm in we need, we, need, we need to hook you up with some lighting, baby. Yeah. Some I need lighting. some like I need some you know I arcades and like some. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Um, but this is but this Wonder. is amazing. I can't wait to catch y'all's um, stream later and um, all the new content from Los and uh, uh, Ken coming up soon. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone in the audience. Thank you so much for the support and the donations during the show as well. Please follow and subscribe to everyone. Links in the description. And yeah, this has been awesome. I will go ahead and uh, play the outro. Every Thank you to my lovely guests. Please feel free to exit the stream yard at your leisure. And yeah, we'll uh, catch y'all later. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye. Bye, guys. Cheers. Peace. Later.